So I, I, I had thought I had thoroughly prepared for today, and the world happened. Um, and uh, I, I, I wish that I uh, could better articulate um, all the emotions that are not just on my mind, but I'm sure on many persons' minds this morning. And yet I think that the, the best way to be able to begin that conversation is to begin um, sort of where we are this day. So we've, we've gathered on this Sunday to remember uh, the Reformation, that the beginning of the, the reforming movement that led to not, not just our own Lutheran church, but so many other folks that have uh, reformed in their understanding of the Christian tradition throughout the world. And I think it's important for us to remember that uh, those of us who are Lutheran, who, who claim that heritage, um, it comes with, unfortunately, quite a lot of baggage. Um, and I, I think it's especially important to recognize that this morning, after the events that happened uh, yesterday um, morning in uh, Philadelphia, um, anti-Semitism in any one of its forms is a sin. We, we need to recognize this. We need to be able to talk boldly about it. And we also need to recognize that our own Lutheran heritage has unfortunately been deeply intertwined with that sin for many generations. In fact, it, it even goes back to Martin Luther himself. Luther, unfortunately, in an attempt to try to rally folks to his own cause against the abuses of the Catholic Church in the 1500s, tried to get the support of Jewish leaders, and when they said no, that they weren't going to work with him for rather obvious reasons, Luther then took to pen to slander and write horrible things about his Jewish sisters and brothers in this world. And unfortunately, many of those writings survived throughout history and, and continue to be spread throughout history that in 1939, and for those of you that know your history, uh, there were some very interesting things that were happening in the world in the 1930s and the 1940s. In 1939, as part of a uh, anti-Semitism campaign led by the Nazi party of Germany, Luther's quotes against Jewish persons were used in that campaign. And on November 9th, the evening of November 9th, Nazi <laughs> soldiers and civilians ran through neighborhoods where there were Jewish civilians and shops, broke their windows, and in many cases caused all sorts of unspeakable harm and violence to persons just because of their faith. And the reason why they chose the night of November 9th into the day of November 10th was in commemoration of Martin Luther's birthday, November 10th. We as people of faith, we as folks who call ourselves Lutheran, this is part of our heritage too. And it's with deep regret that it was not until 1994 that the Lutheran World Federation, along with the ELCA, finally said, we need to apologize for our participation in this part of our heritage and our history. Yesterday morning, folks gathered together for worship in their synagogue. They gathered together for a naming ceremony, not all that different than how we gathered together last Sunday for a baptism and confirmation. And one of the reports, I think at least 20 were injured and others dead, solely because of their faith.
as people who understand, who claim to believe in a God of grace and mercy, this should trouble us to our core. Our hearts should be breaking and aching anywhere there is this kind of bloodshed, anywhere there is this kind of hate, because that's what it is. In this gospel we have for today, Jesus talks to those who have believed in him about being made free and knowing the truth. And those who hear Jesus ask, what is it that you're talking about? Because we're confused as to what you're saying about being made free. And sisters and brothers, I think that we're confused about it too. You see, in our world today, we seem to have this understanding that this freedom that we have from God allows us to go about and do anything that we want to do, that we're okay, that we believe, so it'll be all right. That we can continue to do horrible things to each other and, oh, it's fine, I'm a Christian, I'll be okay. But that's not what Jesus is talking about, not even close to what Jesus is talking about. Jesus isn't talking about this freedom of will where we can go about and just be horribly cruel to each other. No, Jesus is talking about being freed to do something, not being freed from something. Yes, we're freed from the bonds of sin. We're freed from the promise of an everlasting death through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but we're also freed to do something. We're free to be of God's love and mercy. We're freed to show peace and caring and kindness to all the people of this world. We're freed to heal others. We're freed to bind up the broken and the forgotten. We're freed to mourn with those who have lost loved ones. We're freed to be of that hope and healing for those that are desperate to know what peace looks like again. We're free to be of good courage, to be bold in our proclamation of a God of love, a God who cares deeply and passionately for each and every one of us that we need to care for our sisters and brothers too. And not not just our sisters and brothers whom we know well, not just those sisters and brothers who we worship with on the weekend, but those sisters and brothers miles away, those sisters and brothers who on this day are trying to figure out whether or not their loved ones will be able to come out of the hospital, trying to figure out whether or not their community of faith will ever be able to recover from such a senseless act of violence. We're called to show love and care and deep compassion for them too. Yesterday night, um, presiding bishop Elizabeth Eaton sent out a letter to all of the congregations in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, a letter which I uh, posted on, on Facebook for those of you who wish to see it. She talks about the brokenness of this world. She talks about how these events of fear and violence continue to perpetuate throughout our world, but our shared response is one of compassion for one another. Our shared response is to remember the dignity that each and every one of us have been gifted by God and to really care for one another beyond anything else. And so when Jesus comes to us in this gospel reading and talks about how if the Son has made us free, you will be freed indeed. We need to remember that we have been freed to be of God's hope and healing in this world. To be of real care and compassion for our sisters and brothers. And to also call out those moments where we've fallen very far from the mark. Where we've stumbled so far from where we need to be that we need help to get back up again too. 
and only by God's grace be able to walk forward recognizing that thing that we should be able to know in our hearts but always need the reminder of that each of us are created in God's image. That each of us throughout this world bear the reflection of our own creator and are called to love one another as God first loved us. So yes, we're, we're gathered on this day to give thanks for a very rich, very vibrant heritage of our Lutheran church. And also, in the midst of that, remember that this heritage that we share is a human heritage. It is broken, it is flawed, and is in constant need of reformation, constant need of healing. And the only way for that to happen is for us to acknowledge that we need each other to make it happen. That we need each other to bring forth God's healing in this world. That we need each other to bring forth God's peace in this world. Because it's only by God's grace that any of that can happen. And it's only by God's grace that we are able to recognize that somehow within each and every one of us bears that resemblance of a God who cares so much for each and every one of us. That our Lord suffered and died that we might know peace. May Christ's suffering be the only suffering that we ever have to think about. May the great sacrifice that our Lord made for us be the only sacrifice that is made this day so we might know hope, we might know peace, and we might know a love that passes all understanding. Amen.